So hello everyone, we finally came to the village and it took us five hours to get here from St. Petersburg because this village is 300 kilometers far from the city, approximately 300 kilometers far. And now we are here in the village which is called Shug Ozero. Uh, Shug is the name of the lake which is here and Ozero in Russian is lake. So, and the village got this name because uh, it is surrounded by three lakes and multiple rivers. So, as you can imagine, it has really wonderful sceneries. And we're going to explore it. This uh, house here is considered to be our dacha. So, dacha is like a um, summer house and mostly every Russian family, almost, almost every Russian family has dacha or summer house where we go in summer to relax, to enjoy nature and to take a rest from the city life. So this is the Russian stove or Russian oven. Usually it is white, but this one is not white, it's made out of bricks and it is a new version, so it was built just like a year ago or something like this. This small window, you can see, it is used to put wood inside and to burn it. And of course now we don't burn any wood here because it is really hot. It's like plus 30 degrees Celsius and if we burn wood here, it's, it's going to be very warm. When people put some wood there, it burns like for two or more hours, two or three usually, and then the warmth stays in the house for a very long period of time. So, and here on top you can see this surface and it is usually used for cooking. So you use, you use these panels for cooking. These are like cooking panels. And when the wood burns there, they get really, really hot. They can make this huge pot bur uh, boil within just 10 minutes because it is really hot. So there is one more thing here and I never knew what was it for. But um, my husband's uncle told us that it is actually the, the oven, the stove. And here you can see like the baking sheet and 
you can put like bread or something like this here and you can cook it you can bake something here which is just an amazing thing but of course uh, if people want to bake something they do it when the wood is not burning in the stuff anymore because otherwise everything would just burn inside here as well <laughs> Well, one of the reasons why people come here to the village and to the nature is just to enjoy this beauty because there are not so many places in the city where you can enjoy such kind of a silence and such kind of nature as well. And I'm now standing right under the bridge, so as you can see it here. And the reason why we're here, so we decided that we might try uh, to catch some fish or something like this here and I don't know what will happen from this but let's take a look look what is it oh my gosh look at this oh my gosh <laughs> look at this oh my god oh my this is oh my god so it's, it's going backwards it's going backwards I think I think he's going to jump back to water oh my god one more Look how tiny they are. Oh, yeah, they're so small. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Look at this. Oh, he caught him. He, he caught his leg. Can you see it? Oh, that's really. Look, he's just pulling him back to water. Just listen to these birds singing. I think it's so wonderful. It's such a beautiful place, you know. Um, this nature, these woods, and this, I don't know, fresh air is something that you can't find in a big city. You cannot find it there. And so when we want to relax, right? When we want to just recharge, we come here to these places which are far from the center, from the city itself. It's not from the center, it's just far from the civilization. And we come here and just enjoy being here, staying here and enjoy these sounds of nature, this wonderful beauty. Look at this amount of insects around me. Oh, that's scary. We decided to walk a little bit in the forest because it is really, really beautiful here. But... <laughs> The insects here, they are really crazy, they definitely haven't met a lot of people here, so they attack us a lot. But anyways, I think that 
this view, which I'm going to show you just in a couple of seconds, is really worth being bitten by different insects just right now. <laughs> So we came back from the forest because it started to rain a little bit and we decided that we're going to spend some time here at home and we didn't collect any mushrooms of course we don't know them first of all and second of all we just wouldn't have time to do this because uh, we met a man in the forest and he told us that it is very dangerous to stay there when it's raining because it can be a thunderstorm and lightning can be very very dangerous well which is obvious so we decided to leave it better and um, we wanted to create, we wanted to cook a traditional food from these places and actually it is a very popular food in Russia as well. Uh, we wanted to cook the mushroom soup and as long as we didn't have any mushrooms, we didn't collect them in the forest, we went to a shop and we acquired these. So they're going to help us to make our wishes come true. So in a couple of seconds I'm going to show you the recipe of this soup. So what we're going to need for our soup. It is two potatoes, one onion, one carrot, five to ten mushrooms, and two liters of chicken broth. And this is absolutely enough to cook the tasty mushroom soup. The rain stopped so fast and now as you can see it's once again so sunny. Take a look at this wonderful, wonderful place. Oh, so sunny. And we decided not to stay inside, of course. We decided to go outside and to do one more traditional Russian thing. So it is the thing which we do when we come to um, countryside, <laughs> to a village. Um, it's called shashliki or barbecue. to go to a bathhouse or Russian banya or sauna and now I'm going to show you how our banya looks like so banya is not banya without this thing so it actually looks like broom right but it is not uh, the thing we use to clean banya uh, it is usually made out of birch uh, branches but this one is made out of oak and uh, I think it's still good but what we use it for uh, before we go to Banya, we put this broom, like I will call it broom, we put this broom uh, to a hot water to make it very soft, because now you can see the leaves are very dry, but we need them very, very soft and hot. And when we go to Banya, uh, the person who is with us usually takes it and starts to feed us with it, and it helps the blood flow a lot, and that is why after Banya you feel like you recharge to the fullest, you got so much power after it and it is really good for us and it is a Russian tradition as well to go to Banya with these brooms.
So as you can see, it's quite a small place, but it is what people do uh, in, in villages because um, they don't usually have here like showers or bathtubs. And traditionally, when I was a child, it was uh, like a Russian tradition to go to a bathhouse every Saturday. And actually today is Saturday, right? So that's why we go to a bathhouse. And what we have here, we have here all the sorts of things to put water to mix water and usually we have like cold water here and the hot water is in the top over there uh, right above the right above the oven and so to make it all work um, we just have to put some wood inside of this oven and then it hits the water above and the stones which are here so you can see all these stones here and these stones are here not in vain because what is Russian vanya about? So I'm going to pause it just for a second. It's too hot. <laughs> yeah. So why do we need all these stones here? Because vanya, Russian vanya, is about steam. So we make a lot of steam here. And when we sit here on these shelves, uh, we usually take water, usually cold water, and we put it right on these stones to create a lot of steam to inhale it. And this is what makes um, our banya a very nice place. Because, you know, the impressions, the feelings after this banya, they are just unbelievable. And if you try it once, you will definitely want to repeat it again. So, and this is what waits us today. And I'm not going to take you with me, but anyways.